Hello and welcome to Beer to Dot Reviews with Paul Sutton. I'm very happy to be back at the Menu Chocolate Factory for the Sex Party. It's hard to describe how disappointed I was by my visit to the Menier Chocolate Factory to see the sex party. Um, in the past I've laughed and thoroughly enjoyed plays by Terry Johnson from Insignificance and Dead Funny to the recent Prism. But the sex party, both written and directed by Mr Johnson, turns out to be a very po-faced comedy. There's no sex. Not much partying. Now don't get me wrong, that's not why I was disappointed. Uh, I fully expected Terry Johnson to be dissecting the partygoers rather than, metaphorically, taking off his undies and joining in. In fact, this had hints of the play that it could have been. One that used laughter to skewer middle-class liberal hypocrisy uh, and provoke thoughts about gender and sexuality. But the problem for me was that the sex party is so sensitive about doing and saying the right thing, all the light-heartedness has been sucked out of it. And it's a mess. At every turn, something else is thrown in to expose the limits of the apparent libertarianism of the people who are taking part in this orgy. So thick and fast do they come that you hardly have time to consider the implications of one point before we move on to the next one, until you wonder how much more will be loaded onto the ship before it sinks. Add to which, the play's characters are just too lightweight to carry its heavyweight themes. The play is set entirely in Tim Shorthall's naturalistic set, which wonderfully recreates a kitchen in affluent Islington. Now, I know it's not unusual for people at a party to gather in the kitchen, but there was meant to be an orgy taking place. Now, that was through the door to the right. Uh, there was also a door to the left, leading into the garden. A perfect setup for a French farce, you might think. Think again. No, nope, this is about what happens in the kitchen. Uh, that's where we meet all the couples. That's where we learn about their relationships and what happens when sexual permissiveness puts those relationships to the test. Although that's far from the only trial these partygoers face. So couples start to arrive. The host, Alex, is friendly and organised, but somewhat world-weary and dissatisfied, and reluctant to leave the kitchen. Jason Morell's as Alex is very good at portraying that point where a mature man is going from craggy to seedy. His much younger partner, Hetty, played by Molly Osborne, is bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and looking forward to lots of sex with lots of men. Jake and Jilly, played by John Hopkins and Lisa Dwan, are first-timers and are there to watch, maybe have sex with each other, but not with anybody else. However, it seems Jilly is more keen to experiment than uptight Jake, uh, but she needs a lot of alcohol, as do quite a few of them. There's an interview with Terry Johnson in the programme in which he talks of the need to get a big laugh in early so that the audience know they are a laughing audience. Well, the play succeeds in that respect when Jilly says that her safe words during sex are don't stop. Other couples follow. Uh, Jeff is played by the great Timothy Hutton. And what a coup to get this Oscar-winning film actor and splendid stage performer to make his London debut in this play. His character is a rich right-wing American and Mr Hutton is magnificent in the role. He and his plain-talking Russian wife Magdalena, played with a heavy accent by Amanda Ryan, are both experienced partygoers. The insults this couple throw at each other certainly liven up the evening. Uh, in fact insulting each other turns out to be par for the course for all the guests. The final couple are Tim, high on drugs, and Camilla, an uptight radical feminist, played by Will Barton and Kelly Price. I don't think we ever find out what they have in common, except perhaps that he likes to be dominated and she likes to have the keys to the cage. So, they're there to take part in an orgy, but if I wasn't clear already, let me be clear now. There's no sex going on in the kitchen. A little bit of kissing, but no other physical contact. And whatever might be going on elsewhere, there's no nudity. The women do wear lingerie and two of the men bare their chests, but that's the extent of it. It's clear we're not here to be titillated, nor to exploit these actors. This is a serious comedy. A major problem with this play is that, uh, with the possible exception of the host, Alex, 
all the characters are caricatures. Uh, they all seem like they're from a 1960s bedroom farce. I suspect this is a deliberate ploy by Terry Johnson so that our expectations can eventually be confounded. But the difficulty is, when it seems like they're only there for the laughs, it's extremely hard to believe in them or their situation. Act one seems to go round in circles, arriving again and again at the same question of will they, won't they, do whatever it is they're arguing about doing, or not doing. Then at the end of Act one, the arrival of Lucy, a single person, changes everything. Because Lucy is a trans woman. And, to the great credit of the production, she's played by a trans woman, Puya Masaini, who is an excellent actor and brings elegance and sensitivity to the role. So, Act Two resumes with the gang cross-examining Lucy, but soon the situation is reversed as the play explores these heterosexual cis men and women's attitude to sex with a trans woman, and the limits of their liberal views are severely tested. In that interview I mentioned, Mr Johnson says, Everyone is very careful now. I was full of resentment about it before I took this play on, but I've had to adjust to a whole new vocabulary and attitudes. Well, he certainly has. The play feels sanitised. Even innuendos are given short shrift. I understand that many sexual jokes that once had people rolling in the aisles may now be considered offensive, but good comedy is grounded in the world as it is, not as we'd like it to be. And it's hard to believe that a largely middle-aged and often nervous set of people at a sex party wouldn't have made the occasional double entendre. Still, perhaps we should be thankful that we were spared the uh, thank you for coming, thank you for having me kind of humour. I think the sex party could have worked well as a play if it had been less concerned about causing offence and if it hadn't tried to shoehorn every gender and sexuality issue you can think of into its two hours or so. I'm exaggerating, of course, but here are a few examples. A reference to trans women competing in women's sport events is lobbed in and batted out within seconds. Uh, then there's an interesting but fleeting moment when it's suggested that although the women appear to be enjoying the freedom of choosing their lovers, the men may still be calling the shots. On another occasion, someone reads out a list of the many genders we can identify with in our modern world, and it's so tedious that the play loses all momentum. By the time two more serious incidents occurred, instead of taking in the implications of them, I was wondering how much more would be stacked on and taken away from this Jenga of a play. It also ties itself in knots. There's a moment in the first act, a kind of precursor to the transgender debate of the second act, when it's pointed out there are no black people at the party. I thought this could have been explored further, but the play moved on, uh, leaving me, at least, to ponder the irony that there are no black actors in the cast. Every so often there were noises off in the form of loud bangs. I know it was probably a loose door, but I couldn't help wondering if it was the sound of so many half-baked ideas clunking to the floor. I'm genuinely sorry to give the sex party by one of my favourite playwrights two stars. I hope you enjoyed this review and found it useful. If you did, please subscribe and you'll be the first to know about my future reviews. You can also read what I have to say at theatre.reviews. And you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, for the moment, and now on Mastodon. Thank you for watching.